Over one year ago, the Shergold Weir Report was released about building confidence in the construction industry. Let's read it. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. I thought today we would read the Shergold Weir Report from February 2018. I've got my coffee. Very good. I've got my lemon water. Even better. And I'm ready to go through this report. So it's it's a long one, or it's 50 pages. So I think this might end up being a podcast type of style for you guys to listen to. And we'll go through and have a read. So it's entitled Building Confidence, Improving the Effectiveness of Compliance and Enforcement Systems for the Building Industry. Uh, sorry, for the building and construction industry across Australia. Now, I need to get my highlight uh, highlight tool going because I have an issue that due to university, I can re- not read books without being able to highlight. Even if I never look at the highlight again, I need to do it. It's an obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm going to blame my university. So the authors, Professor Peter Shergold AC. Professor Peter Shergold AC is Chancellor of Western Sydney University a former secretary of the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet. He now chairs a number of private, public and not-for-profit boards. He has undertaken a number of previous reviews for Commonwealth and state governments on matters as diverse as gambling, vocational education, community service, major project implementation and Medicare card security. Okay, that is quite uh, encouraging. So, Ms. Bronwyn Weir. Bronwyn Weir is a legal practitioner specializing in government regulations. She has over 20 years experience advising on building regulation for governments, councils, licensing bodies, fire authorities, and building surveyors. Bronwyn was a member of the Victorian Building Regulations Advisory Committee for 12 years. She has also provided advice on the regulatory practice in in sectors including vocational education, early childhood education, food safety, the racing industry, healthcare, and primary industries. Bronwyn is a director of Weir Legal and Consulting Proprietary Limited. So the two authors, they seem like they are more than uh, experienced and at the appropriate level to prepare this report. So this will be interesting. So we'll skip down to the forward. Ministers, we have pleasure in providing you with our observations on the compliance and enforcement systems for the building and construction industry. It includes our recommendations for a national best practice model which will strengthen the effective implementation of the National Construction Code. You commissioned our expert advice in August 2017. Throughout the process, you engaged with us openly. So did your regulators and department officials. Industry too has been candid in sharing with us its views and suggestions for better systems. It is our considered view that the nature and extent of the problems put to us are significant and concerning. They are likely to undermine public trust in the health and safety of buildings if they are not addressed in a comprehensive manner. Many governments are already taking remedial action. Continuing collaborative work will be required by all jurisdictions, however, in order to deliver the reforms that we propose. We recognize with sincere thanks the support that a range of stakeholders have provided to us during the course of our inquiry. We also acknowledge the capable support provided by our secretarial team and sincerely thank them for the input, responsiveness and dedication. Mr. Alan Coleman, uh, Kate Maher, Caroline Pullis and Kathleen Street. Okay. So, let's keep going. The Executive Strum Summary. We'll start with that, obviously. So, in May 2017, the Building Ministers Forum asked us to undertake an assessment of the effectiveness of compliance and enforcement systems for the building and construction industry across Australia. Whilst our assessment has been thorough, this report focuses in on succinct ways, uh, in a succinct ways on shortcomings in the implementation of the National Construction Code. They will not come as a surprise to the BMF or building industry stakeholders as most have been considered in a great 
number of recent government reports. We are confident that, assisted by this report, jurisdictions working cooperative, cooperatively can address these shortcomings. Our goal is to enhance public trust through effective implementation of building and construction standards that protect the interests of those who own, work, live, or conduct business in Australian buildings. Very appropriate that we're reading this nearly two-year-old report, or it was commissioned in mid-2017, over a year old, now considering what's happened with the OPAL. We make 24 recommendations. Okay, so this these recommendations were released a year before this uh, issue happened, so I doubt that they would actually be able to to uh, have had an impact on Opal, considering how far along it was, but it's, let's have a read through them. We believe that compliance and enforcement systems that incorporate our recommendations represent a national best practice model that will strengthen the effective implementation of the NCC. A wide range of problems were set out in the terms of reference to us, for us to examine, namely, roles, responsibilities, and accountability of different parties, education and training, licensing and accreditation, accuracy of design and documentation, that's an interesting one for me, quality control and assurance, competitiveness of practitioner, uh, competencies of practitioners, integrity of private certification, inspection regimes, auditing and enforcement practices, and product importation and chain of custody. So these are all very interesting issues. Um, while they've got the competencies of practitioners, I would have I would have liked them to also look at just the financial um, state of the industry. We were asked to assess the compliance and enforcement systems in place across Australia, having regard to these problems. In doing so, we have given careful consideration to the opinions of various experts that have undertaken reviews of the building and construction industry on behalf of state and territory governments in recent years. Our work was commissioned by the BMF. The BMF is the group of Australian government, state and territory ministers that has responsibility for building and construction. The BMF is created under a series of intergovernmental agreements that establish and maintain the Australian Building Codes Board, which is responsible for the development of the NCC. And I did a video yesterday about, or well, the other, uh, recently about the Australian Building Codes Board and just the relationship between the NCC and the Australian standards, how we have to pay a fortune for the standards that are legal requirements to comply with because they're called up in the building code. The NCC contains the technical requirements and standards for the construction of buildings and for plumbing work. The NCC is adopted by each jurisdiction in its own building legislation. The goal is to have nationally consistent technical standards apply across Australia. Whilst our country has a national technical standard for building, our federation provides for each state and territory to have its own laws governing the implementation of the NCC. Jurisdictions have been very open in identifying the growing challenges they face in ensuring effective compliance with and enforcement of the NCC, so of industry bodies. Criticisms have been delivered in a constructive manner with an emphasis on finding solutions. Just checking to make sure it's all working. Good, good. After having examined the matters put to us, we have concluded that their nature and extent are significant and concerning. The problems have led to diminishing public confidence that the building and construction industry can deliver compliant, safe buildings, which will, provide, which will perform to the expected standards over the long term. Yeah, well, yes, this is over a year and a half old. I'm sure I would argue that that's declined since this was written. We have read numerous reports which identify the prevalence of serious compliance, compliance failures in recently constructed buildings. These include non-compliant cladding, water ingress leading to mold and structural compromise, structurally unsound roof construction and poorly constructed fire resistant elements. Those are all very different, very, very, well, very different, but very concerning. We've heard suggestions that large numbers of practitioners operating in the industry either lack competence, not properly understand the NCC and or have never had 
proper training on its implementation. We have consistently heard that the adequacy of design documents, documentation is generally poor and that on occasion builders improvise, making decisions on matters which affect safety without independent oversight. This exacerbates disputes about the quality and compliance of building work. It also results in inadequate information to guide future maintenance of safety systems in buildings. These issues undermine public accountability in building approval process. We have been told that oversight by licensing bodies, state and territory regulators and local governments can be weak due to either inadequate funding or lack of skills and resources to undertake effective enforcement. We have, as a personal story, we have uh, made a complaint to the QBCCC about someone who was breaching the licensing requirement for project management and they didn't care. They didn't do anything about it. So their licensing requirement are a complete joke. We found that until relatively recently, there's been almost no effective regulatory oversight of the commercial building industry by regulators. Those involved in high-rise construction have been left largely to their own devices. Where there has been supervision, this has generally been by private building surveyors whom critics argue are not independent from builders and or designers. Well, yes, that, that's a, an issue I've raised before. It's, there's a, the potential for conflict of interest simply because your next paycheck may depend on relationships that you could be damaging. The compliance and enforcement systems have not been adequate to prevent these problems from emerging and they need to change as a matter of priority. There is no panacea or silver bullet to resolve these problems. Our 24 recommendations are intended to operate as a suite of solutions which will address weaknesses in a comprehensive manner. We have taken a pragmatic, risk-based approach to formulate a package of recommendations. Together, they address the issues of highest priority that jurisdictions should focus on over the short to medium term. In formulating the recommendations, we've been keenly aware of the significant effort that is being expended by each jurisdiction to continue to improve their enforcement and compliance systems. We have been encouraged by the strong, strong recognition of the need for change. Many of our recommendations are informed by work already underway, which is encouraging. That is a very encouraging statement there. It shows you that the different states and territories are actually trying to address these issues. That fills me with some confidence. We do not espouse a one-size-fits-all approach to regulation. Each jurisdiction can meet its governance responsibilities in its own manner under the cooperative oversight of the BMF. Jurisdictions should work in partnership to reach agreements on how best to implement our proposed framework. We envisage the BMF taking collective responsibility for its implementation and in the process strengthening its collaborative resolve and capability. Some jurisdictions already have in place some of the things we recommend, but all jurisdictions will have work to do to deliver the national best practice model proposed. That work program will include legislative reform, but perhaps the more challenging task will be to make changes that can shift industry culture and improve regulatory practice. The work required to bring positive change cannot be done by governments alone. Industry has a keen self-awareness of the problems that exist. Definitely. Whilst there are many participants who display competency and, and integrity, this is not universal. The building and construction industry needs to actively participate in lifting standards, competency and integrity if it is to produce safe and reliable buildings and continue to be a, an important driver of infrastructure development and economic growth. Our recommendations represent an ambitious package, but we believe that the required shift can be achieved with a cooperative approach to change. Of course, change takes time. We are not proposing that each jurisdiction adopt the recommendations overnight. Why not? That would be interesting. <laughs> Realistically, the recommendations should be implemented over a three-year period. That's good. That's a good time frame. I need a drink with all this reading. 
resources will need to be dedicated to over uh, to oversight the task by the BMF. Transparency is crucial. We believe that, that public confidence will be enhanced by annual reports being issued on progress uh, with those recommendations that are accepted in full or in part by the BMF. Okay, <clears throat> so there's a bit of an overview there, which is encouraging because just seeing some of the recommendations in this report, I thought, well, we've already got that. We've got this here in Queensland. We've, you know, we've got these requirements. So, and some states are more onerous than others that we've had to deal with. So it's good to see that uh, some states are stepping up. So let's look at a summary of these recommendations. So recommendations one to four focus on the registration and training of practitioners. I need my highlighter. Registration and training of practitioners. We recommend a nationally consistent approach to the registration of certain categories of building practitioners and compulsory continued professional development, which includes mandatory hours units dedicated to training on the NCC and the establishment of supervised training schemes, which provide defined career, pa career paths for building surveyors. Okay, recommendations five to seven address the role, roles and responsibilities of regulators we recommend a focus on collaboration between state and local government and where applicable private building surveyors to improve regulatory oversight. We also recommend the provision of broad powers to audit building work and take effective compliance and enforcement action. We recommend that jurisdiction, jurisdiction implement a proactive audit strategy for regulatory oversight of the commercial building sector. Recommendation eight goes to the role of fire authorities in the building design and approval, approvals process. We recommend that consistent with the international fire engineering guidelines, jurisdictions require early engagement with fire authorities on designs, which include performance solutions on fire safety matters. That seems like a fantastic idea. Recommendations 9 to 11 focus on the integrity of private building surveyors. We recommend minimum statutory requirements for the engagement and role of private building surveyors, a code of conduct with legislative status, and enhanced supervisorial powers and reporting obligations. That's, that is interesting because I like they need to have. There needs to be the insurances that when a building surveyor is appointed to a project, the client or the builder or whoever can't just fire them and replace them with someone they like or that they can massage. Recommendation 12 addresses the issue of collecting and sharing building information and intelligence. We recommend the creation of a central database by each jurisdiction and collaboration to develop a platform that can provide for information sharing to inform regulatory activities and the work of the BMF. Information in the databases will also be accessible as appropriate by authorized personnel, including owners or purchasers of buildings. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at a building that's that's been approved, where are all the documents? How can you, where's there a national database of that information? It's often in a you know in drawers in plan drawers somewhere in the building and it could be lost or a little piece of a4 paper stuck on a wall so i can see the advantage of this recommendations 13 to 17 focus on the issue of adequacy of documentation and record keeping we recommend that there be a statutory sorry a statutory duty on design practitioners to prepare documentation that demonstrates the proposed buildings will comply with the ncc we recommend a more robust approach to third-party review of designs and to the documentation and approval of performance-based solutions and variations. I would just argue that, well, from an architect's perspective, uh, with the fee scale gone, and that there's no capacity for the public to say to check that the fee they're being proposed by an architect is adequate to do the job based on professional recommendations, that that's the advantage of having a recommended fee to give you enough money to do the job properly. And uh, it can also be a warning sign if you're going, you know, if a developer engages a team on the lowest price, 
you know, and as a potential buyer, you can go, well, I want to see what you paid these consultants. No, oh, why are you paying them 30% less than the fee guide? What quality are you going to get in your design? Is that going to filter through in the quality of the apartment I'm buying? Because it will, guaranteed you. They'll, they'll cut corners and services and uh, it bites you in the end. Recommendations 18 to 19 emphasize the importance of res- inspection regimes. We recommend that jurisdictions require on-site inspections for all building works and that there be greater oversight of the installation and certification of fire safety systems in commercial buildings. Now, <clears throat> there have been cases I've heard where inspections have been done with, where's my phone, where is it? With this, with the mobile phone held up with Facebook time, face chat or, you know, Facebook Messenger. That is how the inspection has been completed. Okay, I've heard about that. I haven't seen it. It hasn't been on any of the jobs I've worked on because bloody hell, it's insane. But yeah, that's been happening. Recommendation 20 addresses the issues of post-construction information management. We recommend that for Commonwealth buildings, a comprehensive digital building manual be created for owners, which can be passed on to successive owners. I wouldn't even just say that's for for Commonwealth building. Oh, sorry, commercial buildings. Yeah, no, commercial buildings. Yes, that should be a, a recommendation. This would include all relevant documents for the ongoing management of the building, such as as-built construction documents, fire safety system details, and maintenance requirements. Now, as-built documents, have you ever seen as-built documents on certain jobs where the plumber, not the hydraulic engineer, the plumber has gotten a red text and marked up the drawings? And that's what you get. That's your as-builds. It's it's a joke. Recommendation 21 uh, relates to building product safety. We recommend that the BMF agrees to, uh, agrees, pardon me, agrees its position on the establishment of a compulsory product certification system for high-risk building products. Okay, now, I had a a comment on a previous video I made, going, when will people stop blaming China? When will people stop blaming China? And the issue is with products that are imported that the quality isn't what's advertised often. And that's been happening. It's getting better. It's getting better, but still, you'll always have people out there getting cheaper stuff, cheaper stuff. And that's kind of why um, uh, the issue is also with all the cladding and the wiring and those type of things. Even some of the steel that was brought out was rubbish. So it's just, uh, that's a big problem in the construction industry, particularly if as a designer, you specify something and then a substitution is put in. Recommendation 22 to 24 deal with the implementation of the recommendations laid above. We recommend commitment to a three-year timetable for the implementation of the the recommendations. We recommend, that's recommend is used a lot of times in this paragraph. We recommend that the BMF establish a plan for implementation, which is reported against by each jurisdiction annually. We also recommend that to deal with the issue of different technology uh, terminology across jurisdictions, the BMF develops a national dictionary of terminology. A consolidated list of the recommendations is set out in attachment A. So, guys, this video has already gotten up to 20 minutes. So what I will do is I will pause this or will I'll end this video now and we will have a look I'll do part two, where I'll go through probably another 20 minutes of the report. And uh, so it's in bite-sized chunks. So you don't have to look at it all in one bit. Um, Guys, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments about so far what we've heard in the report. Do you, are you encouraged that some jurisdictions are implementing these issues? Are you surprised that we've got such differences across the different states in Australia? Do you think the fact that, you know, Opal has gotten such publicity, they might actually get a chance of implementing some of these things? Guys, thanks for um, your engagement. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.